So today we're talking about lesson 2.6, and we're going to take what we learned about area models yesterday and how they relate to the standard algorithm, and we're going to continue exploring that idea. So today's learning goal is to be able to relate area models to the standard algorithm when multiplying whole numbers. So today we're going to continue thinking about area models. Go ahead and write down this problem in your notebook. 64 times 73. Now I know that if I'm going to use an area model, I need to put one factor at the top one length. So 73 is up here and 64 is here. How might I split up 64 to make it easier to solve? I could make 64 in, into what plus what? Two add-ins that can equal 64. Jack? 60 and 4. Yeah, I could split this up and over here is 4 and over here is 60. Now, how could I find the area of this part right here, this top rectangle? Vasished? I could do 73 times 4. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really know my 73's times tables. Can anyone do 73 times 4 in their head right now? Like that? Or is there an easier way that we could split up this factor of 73 to make it easier to solve? How could I split that up? Sonia? Um, what you could do is like you could uh, draw a line. And yeah. You could write 3 in one block and then 70 again. Ah. Could I also split up the top factor into 70 plus 3? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now I think it's way easier for me to use my math facts to find these areas. So how would I find the area of this rectangle right here? How could I find the area of this rectangle right here? Sporty? 4 times 70. And is that way easier than 4 times 73? Yeah. So what's 4 times 7? 28. 28. And then how many factors of 10 do I have? One. 1. So I need to add 1 zero. So that partial product is 280. Now how can I find the area of this little box right here? Well, what's this top dimension? 3. three. And what's this one right here? 4. So 3 times 4 is? Oh, so that's another partial product, isn't it? Okay, now let's try to find the area of this rectangle right here, this green one, okay? So I just need to find this length. How much is, how long is it from here to here? 60. 60. And then how long is it from here to here? 70. 70. Can I use my math box? What's 6 times 7? 42. And how many factors of 10 do I have? So I add two zeros. So this partial product is 4,200. Okay. Then finally, we have this guy over here, this rectangle, huh? This last rectangle. So what is the height? How, how long is it from he, down here to up here? 60. Okay. I'm going to write it sideways. And then what about from here to here, the other length? Three. Can I do 60 times three in my head? Of course. What's six times three? 18. And how many factors of 10 do I have? So one zero. So that's another partial product. So how many partial products do I have all together here? Four. Four. So how can I find the entire area? What do I need to do? Alina? Add them all up. Okay, so we can add them all up. I like to start with the biggest one, 4,200, because that will help me line up the decimal or the place values, right? If I start with the smaller one, I might not know where to write the bigger ones. So 4,200, there's one. I also have then 280. I have 180, and then I have 12. Okay, so go ahead and add those all up. In the ones place, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 equals? 2. In the tens place, 0 plus 8 plus 8 plus 1 equals? 17. 17, and I can regroup that 10 of those tens as 100. In the hundreds, I have 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, Six. which is 600. And in the thousands place, I have a 4, which is? 4. So the answer then to 64 times 73 it's 4,672, okay? Give me a thumbs up if that area model makes sense to you. Go ahead and write yourself the standard algorithm, which is 73 times 64. Now, I want you to pay attention today because I'm going to show you a way to do it that might be different than what you learned before, okay? Like, well, so I want you to pay attention, okay? So when we do standard algorithm multiplication, we always start with the bottom factor, and the bottom factor, are we starting with the tens place or the ones place? Right, we always start on the very right-hand side, which is, in this case, the ones place. 
Okay, so for right now, we're going to ignore the 6, the 60, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the ones place. So 4 times 3 is what? 12. 12. Now, I can regroup one, 10 of those ones as 1 what? Okay, here's where it's a little bit different. Typically, you might write it up here, right? But that gets confusing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write it right here. Now I'm going to look back at that 4 in the 1's place, and I'm going to multiply it by 70. What's 4 times 70? 280, or 28 tenths, right? Because I am doing 4 times 7 tenths, which is 28 tenths. But I have one more 10 that I can add to it right here. So 28 tenths plus 1 is? 29. 29. So I'm going to record tw those 29 tenths, and now that I'm done with that 1, I'm going to cross it out. The reason why it's better to put it down here rather than up at the top is because you get confused about which ones you've added already, okay? Do we have any more numbers that we need to multiply this 4 by? No. No. So now we can move on to this. This is 6 tens. Because this is 6 tens, we need to put a 0 in the 1's place to show that we are now working with the tens. If I have 6 tens and I want to make 3 copies of the 6 tens, how many tens do I have? How many tens do I have? 18 tens. So I can record 8 of those tens, but 10 of those tens I want to do what? Regroup as 1 what? So now I'm going to put that one here. Does that make sense? Instead of at the top. Now I have 6 tens multiplied by 7 tens. Okay, so if I have 6 tens, I'm going to write it right here really quick, 6 tens times 7 tens. Is that the same thing as we learned 6 times 10? times 7 times 10? Yes. Yeah. So what's 6 times 7? 42. 42. And then what's 10 times 10? 100. 100. So we know that we have 42 hundreds here. So I can write two of those hundreds here, but then I need to add this one. So what's 42 hundreds plus 1? If I have 42 hundreds and I'm adding one more hundred, how many hundreds do I have? 43, so I can record three of those hundreds here and cross out that one because I'm not done with it. And I can regroup four of those hundreds as four what's? Thousands. Okay. Of course, now to find the total answer, we just add. Two plus zero is? Nine tens plus eight tens is? Seventeen tens, and we'll regroup one of those. One hundred plus two hundred plus three hundreds is? Six hundreds. And then 4,000. So do we get the same answer both ways? Yeah. Okay. Now, do you guys remember, and I know it's kind of confusing because I wrote it over there, but like wrote over each other, but that's okay. Do you guys remember how in yesterday's homework we drew arrows to show where these partial products came from? Mm -hmm. So on the area model, is there anywhere that says 292? Yeah. Let me see. My partial products for my area model were 280, 12, 4,200, and 180. Was there anything that says 292? So where did this 292 come from? Talk to your table group. This 292 right here came from 280 plus 12. Is that true? Yeah. So what, what I hear you saying then is the area of this part added up is this. And then where did the 4,380 come from? Is that 4,200 plus 180? Yeah. So this, this partial product came from this bottom part added up. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool.